Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Corey Cohen with Amtech. We are suppliers of educational equipment to schools and universities. We supply things uh, such as you might find in maker spaces, things like 3D printers, laser engravers, uh, large format printer cutters, uh, CNC machines, as well as things like trainers, HVAC trainers, uh, circuitry trainers, automotive trainers, uh, alternative energy trainers, all sorts of things. Uh, we don't just sell them, we do installations, we do tech support and repair. Um, so we're with you every step of the way. Today, I'm here to talk to you about printer cutters specifically um, with Roland printers. Uh, Roland printers, they have a, a few different lines, different types of printers that can do some pretty cool things. Uh, we can produce some things like stickers, like you see here. Um, so you can produce your school logo, you can produce your, uh, uh, you know, if you had a business, your business logo, sell them, give them out, peel them off, stick them on the back of your laptop, whatever you like. Um, Roland printers can also print on things like uh, phone cases, uh, can pr uh, print directly to t-shirts, uh, golf balls, um, screen cloths. Uh, even this uh, lunchbox was printed with a roll and printer. Um, so it can do some pretty good thing, pretty cool things. They're pretty versatile, uh, limited only by your imagination. Um, but today we're here to talk specifically about uh, print and cut machines, printer cutters. And uh, so with that, we'll dive into our presentation. Our agenda today includes an introduction to print and cut. We'll talk about various materials that can be used in these printer cutters. We'll discuss Roland inks, uh, the Bursaworks software that comes with every Roland printer. We'll talk a little bit about various Roland printer models, uh, and then we'll delve into how to actually prepare a design for printing and cutting. We'll talk about the workflow used for printing and cutting. And then we'll get into a live demonstration and actually print out some stickers. With Roland printers, you can print and cut with one machine. Combining printing and cutting one machine increases speed and efficiency. There's no need to reposition your graphics for cutting. And the technology lends itself to a wide variety of applications, including stickers and labels, t-shirts and garments, car wraps, signage, packaging, art, and decor. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to mention that if you have any questions that, as we go along, please enter them into the Q&A box. We'll have uh, some time for a question and answer session following the presentation. Uh, we're also going to have a raffle at the end of the webinar, so uh, if you stick around to the end, we will be raffling off a uh, large wall flare uh, poster that you can put up on your wall. Wall flare is a material um, that uh, it's a sticker material that's designed for sticking to um, like painted surfaces, like painted drywall, it can stick to wallpaper. Uh, it's removable, so you can move it from one location to the other pretty easily. Um, and so we'll be raffling off a custom design of wall flare at the end of the webinar. Some materials that you can use with roll and print cutters um, are calendared vinyl for durable stickers. These are the types of stickers you might uh, again stick on the back of your laptop, on your refrigerator. Uh, you can make bumper stickers out of them. Uh, wall flare for removable wall stickers. I just mentioned that. Vinyl for car wraps. So these cars, if you see a car driving around with a really complex image on it, maybe a photograph on it, that's not painted on the car. Um, it's printed on this vinyl with a a printer like you'll see today, and then um, that vinyl is wrapped on the car to uh, get that image uh, up on that car. I can print it with regular photo paper, so you can do some really high resolution, good looking photos with printers like these. Uh, you can print on heat transfer material for textiles, so you can print a design on this material and then use a heat transfer device to transfer it to uh, t shirt, sweatshirt, uh, tote bags, things like that. And you can use transfer paper for signage and intricate designs. Superior inks make superior products. Roland's durable inks can withstand outdoor environments without fading for years. 
and quick off-gassing reduces wait time after printing. So these are a couple big advantages of uh, the inks used in these roll-in printers is that they're very durable, they'll look good for a long time, and they are uh, they can withstand weathering, so you can make outdoor signage and it'll last for years. Um, and it, they do cure fairly quickly, so whereas with other printers you may have to wait a while before um, being careful not to touch the print. Uh, so that doesn't smudge these uh, rolling inks are going to cure fairly quickly so you don't have to worry as much about ruining the print afterwards light inks including light cyan light magenta and light black enhance gradations and improve overall image quality orange ink <clears throat> increases the color gamut through the red to deep blue spectrum and if you're not familiar with that term color gamut that's basically the range of colors that a, a printer is capable of producing. So the larger or wider the color gamut, um, the more colors it can produce, the more true the color can be to photographs and things like that, and the better contrast you can have. And it can use metallic inks, which can be combined with CMYK to produce metallic shades, including bronzes, silvers, golds, and pearlescent effects. CMYK, by the way, is the uh, fairly standard configuration that most color printers use. If you have a, a desktop color printer at home, it probably uses the CMYK configuration, this four ink configuration, uh, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so it's the combination of just those four colors of ink that produce all these various colors that uh, most uh, color printers are capable of producing. Bristleworks, this is the software that comes with your Roland printer. Um, this is smart software for efficient printing. You can manage jobs in multiple queues, has a simplified control panel, powerful production tools, easier to use than ever. It has a drag and drop interface to quickly add jobs to print queues. So it's very easy to use. Uh, it has integrated spot color libraries, including Pantone and Roland DG color libraries. DG is just digital graphics. Roland Digital Graphics color libraries. <clears throat> it has intuitive tiling, cropping, nesting, and other features. Uh, so now I just want to talk very briefly about a few of the different uh, printer lines that Roland produces. Uh, this here is the SGC, uh, SG3 series of printer cutters. Uh, here we have pictured the SG3540 and the SG3300. These are the same printer. The only difference is the size. Uh, so the SG3540 can accommodate a maximum media width of 54 inches. So that's what the uh, the 540 stands for. It's 54 inches wide is the max width. And for the SG3300, uh, the max width is 30 inches. So these printers use True Rich Color 3 and TR2 ink. So the colors look really vibrant, really nice. Uh, it features easy media loading automated pinch rollers and smart media clamps. So this just helps uh, make the media loading easier as well as the feeding. Uh, it keeps the, the, the paper, the media straight as it feeds and prints out. So you don't have to worry about your, your prints skewing because something's, uh, something's off the, uh, the media rolling. It can produce perforated cuts as well as peel off cuts. Um, so when we talk about printer cutters, for the most part, the cutter aspect refers to uh, when you're printing on this sticker type paper. Um, wall flare is an example of that where it has a top layer that you're printing on and then it has a backing that you're going to be peeling that design off of so that you can stick that onto your wall or your laptop or, or what have you. Um, and so the, the, the cut is not cutting all the way through both layers of your media. It's just cutting through the top layer so that you can you can uh, hand those stickers out uh, as a whole sheet, um, a whole sticker, and then just peel off the top sticker um, when, uh, when you're ready. Uh, but it can do perforated cuts, which do cut through the entire sheet, both layers of that sticker paper. And it's perforated, meaning it cuts through in sort of a dotted line pattern. So um, it doesn't cut in a continuous line. It cuts part of the way through, um, and so it's easy to sort of tear off the individual stickers um, after they're, they're printed and cut. It also has a easy to use color touch screen. Uh, then we have the VG3 series of printer cutters. These have everything available in the SG3 series, 
um, but it comes with additional ink. So it has eight ink slots in a variety of configurations for increased color gamut. Uh, and these are available in a larger size. So whereas the SG3 maxes out at 54 inches, uh, the BG3 maxes out at a 64 inch media width. Then we have the LG and MG series of UV printer cutters. So these use UV cured inks. Uh, there are a whole bunch of advantages to using UV cured inks. Um, just a few of them are that uh, UV inks use less ink, so they're more cost effective in the long run and can, pr can produce effects like gloss and texture. You can print on a wider variety of media with UV inks. They're a lot more versatile, so they will adhere to more materials than standard inkjet inks. They provide sharper contrast and they are more durable and resistant to weather and wear. So these are really advantageous um, if you're doing outdoor signage. Uh, not only are they more UV res resistant, so they the effects, those uh, aging effects of sunlight better, um, but UV inks are more resistant to uh, like abrasion, things like that. Then we have the LEF series of UV flatbed printers. So these are also UV printers. Um, but they can print on a much more, uh, much wider variety of uh, and shapes of materials. Um, so when I showed you like the the lunchbox and the cell phone case, earlier, that would have been printed on these types of printers. Um, you can personalize a wide variety of objects such as plastic, glass, or metal bottles, pens, book covers, phone cases, lunchbox, product containers, really anything you can imagine and will fit into one of these printers. Uh, you can print on with your UV cured inks. The BT12, this is a direct to garment printer. This is a, a pretty fun device because you can print uh, directly on uh, fabrics like t-shirts and sweatshirts, socks, tote bags, and more, um, and then finish it in the attached finishing oven for a more durable cure because when you're printing on things like t-shirts, course you're eventually going to want to wash those and so those inks are going to need to be able to withstand the washing cycle um, and so this this curing oven can help um, sort of harden those inks and make them more durable so that it can withstand multiple cycles we have the gs224 desktop vinyl color cutter um, so this is not a printer this is just a cutter this is a low cost cost alternative to a printer cutter uh, it cuts designs from a wide range of materials to create customized garments, signage, stickers, window displays, and more. So if you want to be able to cut out designs, um, but you don't necessarily have the budget for a full printer cutter, uh, this is an option for you. Uh, and finally, we have the BN20 printer line. Uh, this is the printer I'll be featuring in today's live demonstration. And this comes in two models. We have the BN20A, which has a standard CMYK configuration, but of course it uses those uh, really great rolling inks. Uh, it has a high speed print mode to get your jobs done faster and a lower price point. And then we have the BN20 model, which has a CMYK plus white configuration for highlights and undercoats. It has an automated ink recirculation system, which recirculates white ink and reduces ink waste uh, and white ink allows for printing on dark clear and metallic media so i want to stop here uh, for just a minute to explain why you might want to use white inks uh, so <clears throat> in a standard color printer with a cmyk configuration the way these printers print is they lay down little dots of ink uh, and they will intersperse the different colors of ink these four colors uh, cyan magenta yellow and black will be interspersed on the paper to produce different colors. So when we look at a printed sheet, we don't actually see these tiny little dots of ink. We only see the aggregate effect from, uh, you know, if we zoom out, we just see sort of the mixture of these different colors of ink that produce all these different colors um, that we're capable uh, or that the printer is capable of printing and we see on that paper. Um, but so what's happening is, uh, for example, if we want to print a green color. There is, of course, no green ink here, but there is cyan and yellow ink, blue and yellow ink, and blue plus yellow makes green. So what it'll do, it'll print 
little dots of cyan ink interspersed with little dots of yellow ink. <clears throat> and uh, the aggregate effect we get is that when we zoom out, we see it as green. Um, but also the white backing, that white paper, white substrate that it's printing on is kind of also used as a, uh, a colorant sort of to produce certain effects. So if we want to print something lighter, for example, if we want to print a gray color. There's, of course, no gray ink uh, in the CMYK configuration, but there is black ink. So it'll print these little dots of black ink far enough apart where some of that white backing shows through. And again, the aggregate effect we get of those little black dots with the white paper shown through is that we see it as gray. And so if we want to print lighter gray, it'll print those black dots further apart. So more of the white shows through. If we want to print a darker gray, uh, it'll print those dots closer together. And so less of the white shows through and we see it as being a darker gray. So that works really well when we're printing on a white substrate. But if we want to print on a non-white substrate, maybe we want to print on clear vinyl, maybe we want to print something that will be heat transferred to uh, a red t-shirt or a blue t-shirt or a black t-shirt. If I'm heat transferring that design to a black t-shirt, now instead of having the white paper showing through, it's going to be black showing through. So all of my colors will look darker and where there's supposed to be white showing through, I'm going to see black. So your designs or graphics are not going to look right um, in a standard configuration if you are heat transferring to a black t-shirt. So this is what the white ink is for. It will lay down a layer of white ink and then print on top of that so all your graphics look like they should when you transfer it to that black or red or, or blue t-shirt. Preparing a design for printing and cutting. Designs can be prepared in your choice of graphic software. You just have to make sure that it, it can output in PostScript, PDF, or EPS. These are the formats that can be accepted by VersaWorks, the, uh, the Roland software, the ripping software. Uh, cut lines must be formatted in the correct width and color. Uh, for cutting irregularly shaped designs, you will need to create an outline of the graphic then format it correctly. And so when I uh, do my demonstration, I'm going to be using the graphic software called CorelDRAW. Um, that's the one I tend to, to mostly use. But again, these printers can work with a variety of graphic softwares. Uh, if you already have one installed, that will likely work with this. Adobe Illustrator is another popular one. Um, Illustrator and CorelDRAW both require you to purchase a license, but there are free graphic softwares out there that you can also use. Inkscape is a popular one. Um, and so these all work a little bit differently, particularly when it comes to formatting those cut lines. So I will be showing you how to do this specifically in CorelDRAW, um, but it can be done in pretty much any graphic software. You might just have to sort of play around with it a bit to figure out how to do it exactly right. Uh, and there are a variety of instructional videos for specific graphic softwares out there available on YouTube or just Google how to uh, do whatever you want to do in your particular graphic software. You can almost always find tutorials on how to do it. This is what the print workflow looks like. You would first design graphics in your selected graphics program. Uh, you want to format your cut lines. Again, that's sort of specific to each graphics program. I'm going to show you how to do it in CorelDRAW. You would then export your graphics in an appropriate file format, one that VersaWorks can accept, then import that file into VersaWorks. Uh, you want to add graphics to a queue in VersaWorks and arrange on a sheet and hit print. So now I'm going to show you how to do all that in CorelDRAW. We're going to uh, design a graphic and uh, print a row of stickers. So I have this graphic I designed here um, for my fictional coffee company. Um, and so what I need to do before I send this over to VersaWorks is I need to create the cut line. Um, and so there are actually a variety, even in CorelDRAW, there are a bunch of different ways you can do that. Um, this is the way I typically do it. So I have my graphic selected. I'm gonna go to bitmap and then do an outline trace. Uh, and you have to select the quality of your your graphic, um, I'll call this clip art. Click OK. And we're just going to wait. 
few seconds. There we go. So what that does is it creates these lines that sort of outline all the different shapes um, within this graphic, but that's not exactly what I want. What I want is just to have an outline of the overall mug because um, that's just what I want to cut out with the printer cutter. So I'm now going to take this and I'm going to go to object shaping boundary. There we go. And that actually creates a boundary um, which corresponds to the cut line I want. So this is what I wanted. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, so now I have my uh, the shape of my cut line and I need to format this correctly. So there are uh, basically two things you need to do to format your cut line. One is that you need to make it the correct width and this is basically going to just be whatever the smallest width um, in your graphic software is. So for Corel Draw, this is called Hairline. I think this is the only graphic software that calls it Hairline. It'll be different depending on what you're using. Adobe Illustrator, you would set the point width to 0 0.01. Uh, if you're using a different graphic software, you might have to figure out exactly uh, what the width should be and whatever you're using. Um, but again, if you can't figure it out, there are almost all these tutorials that will show you how to do it. So I've got the width correct. Now it needs to be the right color. And over here on the right, I have my Roland color palette. Uh, and this was installed in Corel Draw automatically when I installed VersaWorks on this computer. Um, so it was imported automatically, but if it doesn't do that for your graphics software, this is available. Uh, this Roland color palette is available on the Roland website. You can download the color palette and manually import it into your graphics software so it's available for you. And this pink color here is what they've designated as the cut contour color. So I need to make my outline here um, that color in order to make it a, uh, a cut color. So I'm going to right click on this to make it that cut contour pink. And so now I have it formatted correctly and I just need to line it up with my image here. There it goes. And I'll just adjust this a little bit. Um, now, one thing I like to do when I create stickers is actually um, let the color of the border of the graphic sort of bleed a little beyond the cut line. That way I can be sure that I won't get any white showing um, on my sticker when I peel it off. So I'm actually going to take this graphic and just increase the size just a little bit. and then put my cut line back on top. You can see the graphic is now slightly bigger than the cut line. I'm just gonna move that around a little bit. There we go, I think that's pretty good. So I now have this sort of <clears throat> gray border beyond the cut line so I can be sure that when I peel this off, I'm not gonna get any white. Um, this can be a little tricky to do depending on how complex the shape is that you're trying to cut out. It doesn't always work perfectly. You may have to mess around with it a little bit, um, but for this, I think it works pretty well. So I think my graphic is ready to print. And what I'm going to do is make sure I select both my graphic and my cut line, and I'm going to go to File, <clears throat> Export. Uh, I like to export as PDF. Click Export. Yes, and then uh, configure this page. So I actually just want to do the selection. If I click current document, it's going to include some white space, and I don't want that. I just want the, the graphic and cut line that I selected. Uh, this is good. This is good. So I'll click OK. And now my graphic is exported as a PDF. I can go to my VersaWorks software and import it. I could just drag and drop the file into a queue here. Um, these are the, the various queues you can have in, um, uh, in VersaWorks. Only my QA has anything in it, but you can organize your different jobs into different groupings and different categories. Um, maybe you have different, different uh, customers that you work with and you want to organize your jobs by customer, or maybe you have different uh, people, different students who use this software and you want uh, each to have their own queue. You can organize it however you want. So I'm just going to add this job to QA. I'll select my file. 
And there it is. <clears throat> and what it's doing when it brings it into VersaWorks, um, or when I go to print, it's what's called ripping the file. VersaWorks is what's called a ripping software. Uh, and RIP, R-I-P, stands for Raster Image Processing. It's what, um, it's sort of the format that uh, it has to be put in so that the printer can understand it and print it out correctly. So it translates it by um, this raster image processing. So I have my image in here, and one thing I can see here is uh, under special items, I have this A, and that A stands for normal cut. Um, so that's telling me that there is a cut line in this image. And if I double click on this, I can format the settings for this print. And one thing I see here <clears throat> is that um, if I look in the image, uh, hopefully you can see this, there's sort of these uh, moving pink dotted lines all around the image that represents my cut line. Uh, Roland likes to refer to this as the dancing ants. And so if you see this, this moving uh, pink dotted line, um, that does indicate that that is a cut line. So it looks like I have uh, formatted my cut line correctly. Um, if you don't see this, you might need to go back to your graphics software and uh, see what you did wrong um, in order to format it correctly. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click Get Media Width. Um, oh, I need to plug in my printer real quick. There we go. There we go. Um, so the printer, when you load media, the printer will actually go across the media and measure its exact width. So it knows how much real estate you have to work with. Um, and then you can uh, transfer that with get media width to the software. So you know exactly how big you can format your uh, graphics when you print. Um, this is a little bit big. Um, this is much bigger than I want it to be. I want this to be maybe two inches across. So I'm going to change this width to, <clears throat> say, 50 millimeters. That's about two inches. Uh, and then I want to print, of course, more than one sticker because I have all this, uh, this space and I don't want to waste this media. So I'm going to want to print at least a whole row of stickers. And so you can change the number by going to this copy section. And I'll just click the up arrow. You can also enter a number in here directly, but I'll have to just click the arrow. Uh, and I can see here that when I got to the ninth sticker, um, that was too much for this row. There's not enough room, so it, it went to the next row. But I want this all to fit on one row, so I'm actually going to decrease the size of this graphic just a little bit. And then I'll go down, back up. It sometimes needs that in order to reposition it. Um, but yeah, I can see by decreasing the width just a little bit, I was able to fit that ninth sticker onto the first row. So that looks pretty good. You can also adjust the spacing between your graphics. Um, it's going to leave a certain amount of space between each one, and you can sort of customize that here. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is click Center on Media, and I want these to be approximately the same distance apart. So we'll do... Yeah, so that looks pretty good. So, yeah, I think I like that. Um, and then the last thing I can do in this screen is I can change the orientation. Um, so this doesn't really matter too much. Um, the uh, top of this sheet, the top of this page represents the front of the media as it feeds out of the printer. So if I'm standing at the front of the printer looking at it as it prints out, um, it's going to print out in this direction. When I'm looking at it, uh, as it is currently, it's going to print upside down. I'm going to see it upside down. It doesn't really bother me too much, but uh, some people like to see it right side up as it prints out. And so I can just flip these. So now it's going to print out right side up. Uh, one other thing I want to show you. So there are a bunch of different um, options you have here that you can go through for your prints. Um, but the one other one I'm going to look at is the print quality. So you can select different print qualities and the lower quality you select, the faster the print time will be. Um, now, when I say lower quality, all of these are going to look pretty good. And especially for clip art like this, I don't really need the highest quality. If you're doing maybe a, a high resolution photo, you might want the highest quality. But for something like this, um, I usually use draft. And that's going to cut our print time in half. 
So I think that's pretty good. Um, so that that looks nice. I think I've uh, selected all my settings as I want them, so I can close out of this. Uh, did I just leave that? Yep, I did. All right, let me do that again. There we go. Quality graph, and I'm going to click OK. There we go. And that's going to save my settings. All right, so you can see over here, um, these are my various print jobs that I have in QA. And at the bottom here, the one that's highlighted is uh, the one I just made. So if I wanted to print out multiple jobs at once, I could just select them. Um, but I only want to print out one for now, so I'm just going to select uh, the graphic I just set up, and I'm going to click print. Awesome. You can see behind me, um, the printer is in the printer phase of the print and cut right now, um, but pretty soon, once it's done, we'll get into the cutting phase, and that's kind of cool to see, so thanks, stick around. There's the cutter wheel cutting out the uh, design, putting out a cut contour. And now, uh, on the uh, back of my laptop, wherever you like. There you go. So, thanks for joining us. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, we do have another webinar later today on uh, laser engravers. Um, so that'll be pretty exciting. I believe that's at 3 p.m. Um, so if you haven't signed up for that, uh, go ahead and do that. That'll be great. And uh, thanks again for coming and have a great day.